Hey everyone. Hello from Saddle Rock Pottery. I'm um, just realizing now you can see my face, but you cannot see my uh, workspace very well. So I'm just going to take a second and get my laptop down so you can see what I'm working on. And um, anyway, and then we'll go through what we're working on today. I'm going to make this composite pitcher idea that I came up with last summer. I have a pitcher shaped similarly in my house. And um, I don't wheel throw and it just drives me crazy. And so I was looking at my picture in the house that very much had a shape like this to it. And I thought, hey, I could use the bowl cutter from De La Designs to make two and join them together to make this. So that's what we're gonna do today. And uh, I'll just really quickly go through, we're gonna use th this cutter. This is the template cutter to make a hand-built bowl. And um, I believe, um, if you just wanna watch this time, I believe Jessica has on ClayShare, on the ClayShare website, I believe um, under resources, or maybe the link to the video um, of how to make a handmade bowl, I believe this template is on there. So let me, uh, let me get my laptop down to my workspace and then we'll start. Let me arrange a couple things here. Put this over here. Let's see if I can kind of angle that up. Put something underneath here so you can actually see what I'm doing. Put something under here. Where's Kevin? Phillips when you need him. Phillips. Kevin Phillips. I think we're I think we're good. I think that'll work. All right. And Instagram, I'm not sure oh, if you can see everything okay, but we'll do our best, okay? All right, so I um, previously said um, if you wanted to get set up, I um, I rolled out. This is about, I've got 12 pounds of clay, and it kind of divided like this. I rolled it out uh, a quarter inch thick because um, I am not, I want to use a tissue transfer on it, and I'm not going to be rolling um, a textured pin into it, which would thin it down a little bit. So I'm just uh, got this over here on. Let me move this out of the way. See if I can knock something else off of my shelves this time. No, I'm just kidding. So I'm just compressing the slab of clay on this side. And I believe I said it was about 12 pounds. It was about half of a block of clay. I think Instagram, I'm gonna move that back out a little bit. There we go, there we go. Okay, so I'm compressing, did it this way. And then we'll go back and go the other direction. And then I'm gonna take my needle tool and just come off this edge and set it aside. I'll use that later. And then I'm going to flip this and, there we go. and do the same thing on this side. I'm going to compress it with this yellow rib. And do both directions again. Just some little, uh, little bit of, I should probably clean this off when I do that. Put my little sponge here, clean off the edge, and we'll do it again one more time. 
just to make sure it's all right. Okay. And now I'm going to loosen that from the board a little bit. And this clay is really wet. Um, even though it's like 91 here today, yes, in northern Minnesota, 91 degrees on my thermometer, um, we've only got about, probably actually only about 70, it's only between 75 and 80 in my studio, but it's, it's kind of humid. So this is, uh, it's not too bad, not too bad to work with. But I'll, uh, I'm just going to let that other piece set until, um, until I get done making this. We need th that piece for the spout and for the collar of the pitcher. So what I'm going to do then, after this is released here, go ahead and take the cutter. And I'm, my, my cutter a little bit. I don't know what happened. Um, I had it laying on a shelf away from my kiln. And I came out one day in this one and... A couple of my other ones were were a little little bit, but you know, they still work. They're fine. So I'm gonna cut two of these in my clay. And I'm actually going to get my no, I'm not because it's way over there. I was gonna get my rolling pin, but it's I'd have to climb over everything to get it all my cords and everything. All right, pull this guy out. And then I'm just gonna flip this around. Make sure it's spaced properly and go ahead and push a little bit around here. All right, I think we got everybody down. And then we need the piece for the bottom, this little guy. And we'll just cut him right here. And you only need one. You need two bowl shapes, but you only need one of these for the bottom. For the bottom, I'm going to set that there. And what am I doing? Here's my... Mm. Oops. I'm just going to put them on here for a second. All right. Keep put that there. And then I'm going to take this stuff out of the way. Keep this handy. Bring it with the tissue transfer. You're going to need this. All right, this here, actually I'm going to put it right on my board, on my tabletop. Oops, a couple little dry pieces on there. All right, I'm going to just run this rib over here, just because it got a couple little dry flakes from the board on there. I'm going to take the bottom piece and put it on here on a little, just got a little bat here. And I'm going to score the bottom. Let me see if everybody, I can see everybody's okay. Okay, there we go. And my laptop is really tipped weird, so I have no idea if anybody's making any comments or asking questions, but you know. I'll catch up. I'll catch up with you in a minute. And then we're gonna take this one. Here's my oh there it is. And do that little 45 on either end. Might as well do it on both of them because you're going to have to do both. So we'll go under on that side. 
just so it's a little beveled edge there. I think you can see that beveled on the ends. And then on the other end, you're gonna cut underneath at an angle. Oh, I already did that. I already did that one. Whoops. Sorry, one on the top side. There we go. Goes up here. And I'm gonna slip and score those. Score them for right now. And then this is the inside. It's a little bit rough from sitting on my table, but we're gonna fix that when we smooth out the inside. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of slip because this clay is so wet. I'm just gonna do a little dab. A little dab will do you, just like brill cream. Brill cream. It shows the woman go up and run her hands through somebody's slimy hair that they just put brill cream in. Trying to turn this so everybody can see. Roll it up, roll your finger. And then I, I love the little red rib for that. Just run it right over there on that seam. Now, some people don't care about the seam. Depends on what it is, but for me, I don't. Like I, I want people to think that I threw this bowl, probably because I, you know, that whole throwers wannabe thing. I'm gonna do that on the inside too. All right, there we go, nice and smooth. I don't know if you can see that. See that? Okay. All right, my little friend. So that one can sit there for a minute. So I'll set that one aside. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll do the same with this one. Get this one set up. And slip and score. And I'm leaning way over there, I'm getting the light. And again, we're just gonna roll with the finger up to the top. This just seems to be the thing to do because if you're swiping, then you're like stretching the clay. If you roll it, it's my experience anyway, it brings you right to the top. If you got a little bump, you just, you know, smooth it out. Same on the inside. And I'm going to take my rib, my little soft rib. I forgot my water bucket in the house. So just wiping it off with a wet sponge. Make that line go away. Same on the outside. There we go. There's the inside and there's the outside. Pretty good, right? Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over. It's gonna be like, Whoa, what are you doing? I'm gonna dip that bottom edge. Make sure that's nice and snug on there. I'm glancing every once in a while, hoping I'm still on camera. And this is too small. I grabbed, I grabbed the wrong one. So I obviously need a four inch chunk. So I will be right back. I'm gonna go cut one. I thought that looked a little small. <laughs> Whoops, that must be the cutter for the tumbler. I believe it is. 
All right, so here we go. And I'm just gonna smooth this guy down a little bit. And, all right, we're gonna run a little slip around this, around that little four inch base. So this is a four incher, we're gonna cut a four inch, four inch cookie cutter. Put that on the bat, slip and score, and then we're gonna come back in on this guy. And score that. And again, just a tiny bit of slip. Actually just kind of more, it's not even that thick with slip, it's just kind of like wet. Just adding a little bit of wet. And then I'm gonna stick it on there. Might have to do a little scooting around on there to make it fit down on there. And this is the part where I always forget to do this. I forgot to take my rings off. And I've got my, got my, my cute little bowl that Suzanne made me put my rings in. My cute. Love it. This is Jess's, Jess's mushroom pin. I don't know if you can see that pattern in there. That's what it looks like. Isn't it cute? Love it. Perfect. And, oh, that one's not coming off. All right, but that one is. All right. So I'm just, I just kind of go around. This is how I do it. It's probably not, you know, everybody does their own thing, right? I kind of go around, get it centered on there, on that, on that cookie at the bottom. And I kind of just go around and press it down a little bit. And then I'm going to take this, my little wooden, I think this is a clay knife. I think so. This guy, my favorite. It's like my favorite tool. I love this thing. I'm going to dip it in water just a tiny bit. Put this on my banding wheel. And I'm going to just go around the bottom. Have it angled up just like you're making a mug. You're going to angle, getting that angle, the knife up first when you're going around. And then I'm going to do it straight. And then I'm going to kind of angle it down a little bit. Okay. So then the inside's going to look a little wonky, so we're going to fix that. I'm going to take that. Well, first you can take your finger. I'm going to dip my finger in the slip. And I'm going to just go along that edge on the inside, supporting it on the outside. So we get a good connection down there. And now I am going to use this just to make sure I kind of angle it a little bit and I really kind of push, push it against my hand. Again, so I'm not seeing any lines in there. You don't want to see any lines. That could mean it could potentially crack. Not that it couldn't potentially crack if you don't see one. Anyway. All right, so that's what it's looking like in there right now. And then I am going to take my rib in there. And Rich McNatt, this is the rib I was talking about to you. It's like this rib, but if you would bevel just the opposite side, that would be fabulous for me because I'm left-handed. This isn't, you're not seeing this in reverse. Um, I'm left-handed, so... I'm using this side, but I wish it was beveled a little bit more, but you just do it careful, right? So I'm going to go down in there, push the seam, the joint, whatever you want to call it. Again, I'm just using that soft edge gently against my hand to uh, make it nice and smooth in there and connect. And it's more of a challenge because that edge is not beveled. But I've gotten so used to doing it that it's it's working. So, and then I'm going to take this, 
And actually, I keep this big squirt bottle handy. And I just squirt it on my sponge when I need a clean sponge. There we go. Take a... It's not wet, wet. But it's not dry at all either. And I'm just going to... Just like your wheel throwing, you just want to go in there and clean up that bottom. So that's what the bottom looks like. Let's see. Okay. Now comes tricky part. Now we're going to score this. And actually, I think what I did last time, because this has got a tiny bit of an angle on it. I'm going to take another, this is kind of a light, lighter um, bat. Just set it on there. And tap it a little bit just to kind of make the top a little bit flatter. I'll just do this again. Okay. Set that there. Then we're going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to do, let me do that again. There. Just a little bit. You're just tapping really lightly. Otherwise, you're going to, like, crunch it. Slip this guy. Score it, I mean. A little, a little bit of slip on him. Do, 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 do. Set him down here. We'll get this one back up here. Unknown caller. Sorry about that. I thought I silenced my ringer. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I better. Okay. All right, so now we're going to take this guy and flip it upside down on here. Okay. Now this time, you're going to be really careful. And this is something that I learned to do when I actually when I was learning how to sculpt from my friend. I'm going to take this serrated rib and I'm just going to lightly brush it over that seam in an angled fashion on there. Might need to support it a little. I'm going to go down this direction all the way around. Oh, I should have lined up my seams, but I didn't. It's too late now. I'm not going to do it. I don't, it's not going to make a difference. We're going to be covered up anyway. Mm -hmm. Clean it off. And then I'm going to come back towards myself at the other angle. This way. And then I'll scrape that off. And then I'm going to do one up at an angle toward me, kind of cross hatching the cross hatch. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take my red rib. And I am going to go around. I'm just going to like turn this at the top of my hand. And very gently, just under the seam, on the under on the underside of that seam. I kind of just go 
around this way. So I don't see that line. And then again, the other direction from the top down. Make it nice and smooth. Very gently, very gently. I'm hardly putting any pressure on this at all. We will put more pressure on it once we get the inside seam done. And don't worry about the top. The top is all wonky right now. We'll fix that in a minute. And then I'm going to take this because I... I could get my hand in there and I will in a minute, but I'm just I'm just gonna use this right now. Again, dip it. I'm not dipping it in the slip, I'm just dipping it in the water. Matter of fact, I'm wiping it off so that it's wet but not full of slip. And I'm just gonna go in and run it over that seam as though it was my finger because my hand is so big. I don't wanna shove it in there just yet. I'm just kind of making little strokes in here to pushing against there. I suppose just like the bottom of a coffee coffee cup or something. A little bit. Okay, and all the way around. Let's see if you can see. You see? I don't know if you can see in there. Anyway, oh, I got this little light. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see in there? I don't know. Anyway, it was worth a try. I'm going to take the this end of this rib, small end of the rib, and very carefully go in, kind of run it flat, kind of running it like like pot, I'm running it like this over that seam, like that. To kind of flatten it out, give this a little more shape, and just just uh, make that seam nice and nice and flush. And now I'm going to go back around this one, and now I'm going to turn the rib. I'm going to do this with the rib. And I'm going to go around the outside on that seam one more time. There we go. And then I'll probably run it around a little bit just to just to clean it up a bit. Okay. And over here, more time over the seam, kind of slowly working my way up back to that spot. And then I'm going to gently wipe that off, gently go around here. So it's a little misshapen right now, but then that's where, oh, I can't use my flower pot because my phone that's streaming Instagram is holding <laughs> my thing. Anyway, well, what you can do, I can, you know, kind of set this on top and eyeball it. We're, we're pretty darn close. And then I'm also going to just put this, just go in here, squeeze it out. Carefully, carefully go in here, get any extra water out of there. Clean up that seam a little bit. Okay, so this is a, um, this clay body, we're going to let this sit for a minute. This clay body is Midfire White from Continental Clay. Let's see, I think that's looking pretty symmetrical. No. I just wanted to set up a little bit more before I start monkeying with the shape. So in the meantime, 
move this out of the way. Set that there. I was going to use a blue and white tissue transfer on this that I bought last winter and I've been dying to make this picture with it. And then I realized I didn't get the big long sheet <laughs> of the tissue transfer. So I have to choose another color. And I looked through my book, but then I remembered I got these beauties from Sandbell the other day. So let's see what we got. I'm kind of leaning toward blue. I love blue and white. And this is just a nice clean, super clean white. And uh, oh, looky, looky, I got a little piece of, oh, I thought I got a big one. I thought I got a big one of these. This is Jess's little Scandy Birds. Doggone it, I thought, I guess I was throwing my stuff in my cart so fast I didn't see what I sizes I actually got. Well, got these darling little lovebirds. I was kind of thinking of those for, for uh, Valentine's Day. I got these, super cute. And this pretty yellow. I'm such a sucker for this, though. I do have, do have this. I have a lot of this. And they are pretty, but I kind of feel like doing something different. Wow. Let me see. I, I, I kind of forgot what I ordered. This is all Halloween stuff. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to do... Uh-oh. I'm not gonna do that one. I think I'm gonna use the cute little citrus one. I think I got two big sheets of that, so I can make, yeah, I can make my serving tray with that as well. So, oh, I got a lot of them. Yay! Yay me! I don't know if anybody watched Clay Share Day and. Um, Watched Dan Lee's mother, Ying Zhu, make that, uh, she was doing beautiful, uh, she made a beautiful platter with sur uh, surface decoration. And she also did, um, I, I, I started watching her channel on YouTube. It's just her name, Ying Zhu. And um, oh my gosh, I love watching her work. I could, I could literally, I was trying to get to watching her work. Okay, so here's how I'm going to measure this. I'm going to take one of my transfers and um, I think I'm going to just turn it over. And you, of course, want to get the most, you know, be really conservative because, you know, you try to use, utilize the most of your stuff over there. Um, my pencil and my scissors. So this is this is how I if I'm making something like this, this is how I do my tissue transfers. I go along the outside. Doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. One. And I'm going to decide the best way to do this to maximize what's left. I think I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do it this way. Okay. Push that down a little bit. Hold it in place because of that will work. <laughs> Kind of like me, a little wart. It's going to run right by the other one. Okay. All right. So that's done. We're done with that. And Now, I have not worked with this particular transfer before. And it's got a lot of glaze on it. So, 
to give it an extra minute to transfer, I think. So I'm just cutting really carefully along that line. I need to sharpen my scissors. I keep a little baggie or a plastic sleeve and I save literally every little piece. You never know when you need one, a piece like that to like fill in. It's like, oh, I made this, but I wish I had just that tiny little bit more. So yeah, like this, snip that there. Yeah, we save, we save all those. I'm gonna make something like a patchwork quilt one of these days with all of my little scraps from Sambo. Because I love them so much. Like I'm getting something from UPS, and I'm thinking it's GR Pottery Forms. I'm so excited. I think that's what it was. I don't know. I ordered really, uh, what did I order from? I ordered from a few different places the other day, and I think that's my GR Pottery Forms. Yay! Spherical, spherical rectangle platters, here I come. All right, so I'm going to get this out of the way. I need to take a little sip of my Gatorade because it's super hot in here. Okay, so now, since I don't want to mess with the shape because it's still very much like it was from the template, So I wonder if this is, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go around here and cut this loose. There we go. Now I'm going to very gently flip this over. And when I do, I'm going to put it on the dry side of this bat so it pops off easier. I'll, I'll worry about fixing the bottom later. Although I just want to, actually, now I'm looking at it, I do want to firm up that seam just a tiny bit. Get that stuff off there. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. And now I'm going to clean off my sponge a little bit. My squirt bottle. So I want a clean sponge when I'm putting the transfer on. And you want it kind of, you know, get a little bit of water. That's how I I prefer. You want a little bit of water when it's still going out there. So I'm gonna attempt to find the seam on here. Okay, there's there's my seam. Try to line this right up with the bottom. Just going to lightly brush that on there. I don't want to do it too much until I make sure it's flat. I'm going to just gently go down. I'm going to kind of pull it off a little bit. If I'm getting wrinkles in it, I'm going to pull it off and then reset it on there.
over, but I didn't I didn't want to go all the way to the bottom. I guess I should have compensated for that. So that side is nice and smooth. And then this side. Oh, uh, rats had already started to transfer. This side for the Instagram watchers, if there are any at all. It's going to take that up a tiny bit, make it tighter. There we go. There we go. And I have to do it away from me. Well, I did it on the outside. I've got uh, a little bit of a gap here, which is no big deal because then we have our scraps over here, right? That we're just keeping. Let's see if I can find one. It's not one little guy. Let me see. How about you? No, it's not going to work. All right, we'll fix this in a minute. I just want to make sure I'm just going over it with. All right, I'm going to just start here. Really gently, gently, gently with that rib. And I'm going to go this way, down stroke, super careful, kind of work out any little, you know, little problems with wrinkles or creases. Sometimes if there's a crease, they just kind of work themselves out. You don't have to reset it. Like that guy right there. Okay. And that one. And then I'm going to go back and go this way. Again, just super light pressure. Very, very light pressure. I'm going to get that seam on there. Okay. Then I'm going to cut. Let's see. Mm. No, I'm going to just cut these individually and stick them on over the other one. So I'm cutting this one really, just really close. I'm cutting this little slice of this little, this little lime out here. And I'm going to leave a tiny bit of an edge so I can peel them off. And I'm going to put that one, it's going to overlap a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm going to put you there. I'm just going to line it right up, right over the other one. There we go. So we have a complete one on there. Get a little, little rub. And it looks like we should have a red one here and part of one there, but eh. What do we got? What do we got? Hmm. I think I want this orange one on there. He doesn't really go. I'm going to get a whole one. Yeah, I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to put that guy on there. You want the whole one? No, I don't. So we're just going to use this one. And he can overlap and nobody's going to notice, especially if you are putting margaritas in this picture, right? Now that looks eh, eh, around the corners a tiny bit. I'm going to just stick them right there. Right there. Just filling in the gap. Oops. That one kind of caved in a little bit when I was applying it. So now I am going to take this damp sponge. And I know I see other potters do this, like even ones that sell, not, I haven't seen Sam, Sambau Studio do this, but other places that sell transfers, I see them rubbing this. And once upon a time, Jessica Putnam Phillips has a video 
that enlightened me to this tissue transfer thing. And I think it was back in the day when she was still like filming her own stuff. And I just freaked out when I saw these things. They were so amazing. But she says dab. So that is what I'm doing. I'm lightly pressing and pulling away. I'm not rubbing this to get that transfer on there. Dab, dab, dab. I'm going to do it this way. So you can just see. Lightly dabbing that on there. Okay. While I have this upside down now, I am going to take my... Uh, there it is. You know, you get used to certain tools. This little red rib, or black rib. This is just a little Kemper black rib. And this is just... I love this one. It's, really, it's super hard. And so it's nice for cleaning stuff up. And I'm just going to use this on the bottom here to smooth, smooth out the bottom and make it pretty. I'm not putting my stamp on this yet, though, because I'm just, it's still too soft, but I just want to make it nice and even. And then it's nice to take that straight edge and just kind of run the angle on there. Oops. I'm just kind of making a little angled, angling the bottom a bit from where the seam is. I don't know if that's right or wrong or proper, but that's just what I do. And I'm just going to lightly brush that little edge in and smooth it out. Run my finger around there. Make it pretty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to take this little edge, peel it back, and look and see. Oh, this is the fun part, right? This is why we do tissue transfers. It's just the funnest part ever. And if you peel it back, pull it back away, like reverse. Don't pull it out, pull it back. I think you have better results. That's what's better in this studio. You do you in your studio. All right, and we're going to grab this little guy. Oops. Well, sorry, I got to do it toward me. Otherwise, I'm going to get a big nick in there. Even though I did anyway. Ta-da! Isn't that cute? Cute, cute. I think I foresee marigold on this thing. All right, there we go. There's that one. Now I'm going to pop it off gently into my hand. Put it back on this side. It back on its spot and now we do the other side that I see I carelessly dripped on. Hmm. Anyway, let me find that other seam there. A little goofy seam with my weird, there it is. Okay, so I want to line that up with the same, same spot. See those little dots in there? That got wet, doggone it. Anyway, So this is the top now. So let's give me a little guff. A little bit of guff on this side. Maybe if I do it away from you, it'll be better. It just got a little wrinkle in there that doesn't want to go up. Go away. And then I got a side. And we'll gently stretch this around. All 
Okay. So now we're going to do the rib. If there is a crease, um, don't try to run it all the way down. Sometimes if it's on the bottom side, just run the rib halfway and then run it up on this way. And then sometimes that works it out instead of like having this whole crease sliding down the transfer of your pot. And then just go up on that side and then they seem to straighten out. Hopefully this one's going to turn out okay. I think so. I think it will. A couple little rough spots, but I think we're okay. This is such a bright, bright, cheery, summery looking transfer. I just, I can't wait till this is fired. All the way around. Going down. Down stroke. And then we'll go around. Start at the top. Go around this way. Right, I just got that other little little spot that seems even a little narrower than the other one. So I think I will do. Here's a nice little. No, oh, that's not a whole one. Try to try to match them up here a little bit. Nope, I don't have another whole yellow one on on the big piece. So I'm not gonna waste the whole thing and I'm just gonna say, hey, we'll just use this piece. We'll stick it in there somehow. Make it work. Make it work time, like Tim Gunn says. Mm. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to stick this whole thing right on there. So I just stuck this piece on there. At the end of the day, it's not going to be terrible. Okay. I'm going to take this. i squirt water. Squeeze it out. And here we go. Just doing a little dab. Make sure we got a good transfer on there. All right, there we are, all the way around. Beautiful. It's just the best. This is almost as fun as opening the kiln. There we go. There we go. So that's pretty funky looking, eh? I know I didn't really line them up on here, but I'm actually I'm contemplating doing something fancy on here. So I'm still trying to decide. If it was a fancier transfer, I would think so. This one's kind of casual, but Oh, I'm still, I'm still thinking about that. I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do with that one. And okay, so we are this far. 
And now I want to get, I'm going to set this down for a while. And now I need to make the collar, which will involve this piece of clay. So your other piece of clay that you had. And now this one's setting up nice. This one's nice and, you know, it's getting a little firm. See that? So that's, that's like perfect in my opinion. So again, I did not uh, press this one yet. So we're going to do this. Okay. I'm actually going to just take this board out of here. It's stretching a little bit, which is totally fine. One more little swipe. And now, let's see, I forgot <clears throat> to mention you'll need your template from Mug, which <clears throat> I need to step over here and grab it because I forgot to set it out. If I can find it handily. did not find it but I remembered so I believe I believe when you make a mug with Jess's template I believe they are is it four and a half by 12 is it anyway but for the collar of this because we don't want it way up here uh, we just want three inches and I think this little piece oh what do you know Three inches right here. So I've got craft foam. I'm gonna go around here and I'm just gonna just me gonna measure it right on top of my picture here. Four inches. I'll make a four inch. Maybe I can just do it the easy way and do this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna Take my scissors and just make a little cut. And then I will tell you how long this is. This here. All right. Oh, 13. 13 inches. But that might be a little generous. I'm going to cut it just shy, <clears throat> just shy of 13 inches. So it's three by 13. I have to cut a little off. Eh, that's okay. But what we're going to do this time first, let's do this because this angled piece was different. But what I am going to do with this. I am going to put my transfer down first. And I think we've got, mm, oh, we're running into that problem again too. I am going to go ahead and just use a new transfer so I can get that nice length on there with an uninterrupted. I'm just gonna slow it down there, let me see. 
that'll be just about perfect right there, right across the end. So it looks like just two, two and a half rows. Okay, we'll do that. Cut this transfer. And I'm just going to cut right down the middle of these. Set that big guy aside. And make sure, even though it's the edge piece, to cut off the little marks and the maker's mark. <laughs> I've done that before. Put a transfer on something and did not realize that I was putting the company name, their company name, not mine, onto my work. Not that I have anything against China clay art, because they certainly don't. But, but they didn't make my piece, just the transfer. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set this right on here. Right on the wet clay. Press it down, just like the other stuff. I'll go ahead and use my yellow rib this time. Just back and forth a few times. Mm -hmm. And then also this way. I like to dab it to the point of, you don't want to saturate it but you want it to look like it's almost like it's going to look when it's on. That's, that's when I think you know that it has transferred completely onto there when it's nice and saturated on there. Okay. And then while that's sitting on there, so I don't smear it, I'll set my template on here. What I should be doing, bad practice here, should be putting my, my ruler edge along here so I have a nice clean line. So I'm going to do that this time, straight up and down, all the way down. I'm going to go the angle here, my angle. There we go. Peel that off. Let it dry before I start messing with it. I'll go ahead and cut that angle off. Okay. All right, I'm going to gently set over here so I can get this piece of clay out of here. We will revisit this piece in one moment. Okay, while that's drying, now I'm going to go in and add a little bit of shape to this guy now that it's not wobbly, super wobbly like a worm. Let's see, do I need to, there we go, put that in a little bit. I'm going to use this really soft little red rib again. I'm going to do it upside, hold it upside down so the fat part is on there. And I'm just going to go in and just like a mug around, add a little shape to the to the picture. Go around a couple times. We're moving gently up to the seam. And I don't want to eliminate that seam all the way. Like I said, I'm going to try something with this. We'll see if it works. There we 
go. Kind of pushing it. How's that? How's that look? Does that look pretty symmetrical? It's not bad. Okay, now we'll go in and do the top. Do the top part, same thing. Kind of push this in a little more there. That one was kind of kind of angled. So I'm just let me get over here. So you can see, I'm just again just pushing the rib gently against my hand to give this a little bit of shape, a little bit rounding it out, just a little bit. Might be a little off center. Move this side kind of. Nope, it's okay. That looked like it was tipping. Thought it looked like it was tipping. There we go. Okay, and the top is still pretty round. And I have a couple of little pieces that just kind of fell down in there that I got to clean up quick. Nope, doesn't want to come out. Just a little. No, if you didn't want to come out, then I'm just blending them in. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so again, we are going to um, score the top. And get it ready for the collar. We're going to do the same thing. Slip and score. Slip and score that side. And we're going to make a cylinder with it. Now, before you join the seam, set it on here and make sure it's going to fit. And this looks like this looks like a pretty good fit. I'm going to trim just a tiny bit off of one end just to make sure. So I'm going to cut probably like a quarter inch off of. Uh, I'll cut it off of this side. Oops. I'm just using my needle tool. Probably want to use something with a blade like this to make sure it's nice and even. Okay. This is probably taking much longer than any of you anticipated, but you know, it is a composite piece. Good things take time, right? And again, we're going to do just a block in Instagram. Going to do that. Roll it up on there. Roll your finger. Get that nice seam. And then don't do anything else before you take your damp sponge and just carefully try to dab that away. That should gently, gently wipe that slip off of there. Shouldn't be too much of a problem once it fires, once it dries and fires. And so then I'm going to take the rib and go on the inside, push my hand in there. And again, we're going to get the, get the seam in there nice and tight. There we go. And there. That's not bad. That's not too bad. To know which is the right side up, you know. Uh, like up a little bit of the edge down there. So I, I think this is going to be the the bottom part of the neck. Just 
gore. It is normally never quiet in here. Normally when I'm making things, I have my little Harman Kardon speaker going and it's pretty darn loud in here because I listen to I listen to a variety of music, but um, I like metal. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> you probably never guess it by looking at me, but that's what predominantly plays out here. Christian, Christian music, Christian metal, Christian rock, alternative rock. Uh, I love Prince. I do listen to a lot of pop, but I have a very picky pop list. But then there's the times, usually if I'm doing Scraffito or Mishima, painting something, a lot of detailed stuff. If I'm building, that's when I want the, the loud stuff. But when I when I uh, am doing Scraffito or something, then usually it's just instrumental stuff. All right. So we've got that on, tried to line up the seams. Now, uh, I'm gonna go on the inside first and I'm gonna do that same thing with the serrated rib. I'm just gonna kind of cross hatch that in there. Do it very gently because, because, because it's narrow. And I just realized it'd be a lot more helpful if I was working at a shorter table. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. There we go. I'm just taking my serrated rib and I'm going down in there gently over that seam to join the two sides. Do it with this hand. You have to be extra careful. I am ambidextrous, which is helpful in this line of work. That just made my hand cramp because I never use it for that. All right. Now I'll take this one and rinse it off a little bit. And I'm gonna go in this side. I'm gonna use a straight side since it's a straight neck. And I'm just gonna work my way around. and press it into my hand. There we go. Look we're good. Look we're good. This isn't super clean water, it's my slip water, but that's okay. Squeeze out your sponge really good. Clean up the inside. We'll, we'll deal with the seal the seam on the outside in a second. Just wanted to get this one. Get the inside seam locked really good. Okay. Put the bottom. If we have any wet in the bottom, get that out of there. There we go. Okay. So now I am going to gently take, uh, I think I'm going to use my knife. And again, I think I can put this up here now. If you can still see. A little bit closer, yep. A little bit closer. Turn that a little bit. I'm just going to take my knife, my wooden knife. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to gently run it on the seam, on this seam right here. And I know Instagram can't see what I'm doing, so I'll do it the other way. I'm just running this gently along the seam, and this knife is pretty much, I put it in there, pretty much erasing the line for that seam without too much of a mess, without too much of a, you know, noticeable difference. I'll just run my finger around the inside, make sure we're all still good. 
feel like this is leaning. It's like the leaning tower of Pisa. I think I need to like, there we go. Maybe the bottom was just a little off balance. I don't know what was, I must have, I must have been pushing it. I must have pushed it a little bit. And then I'm gonna go over that seam. Actually, I'm just gonna do it with my finger. I don't wanna mess it up with the sponge. Now this should come out pretty clean in the firing. I think that that underglaze kind of comes through the slip, any little slip that you might have on there. I am gonna, because you don't want to start smearing it around because then it'll like spread all over the place like, like it's happening right now. See what I did there? I tried just dabbing it off of there and it just kind of smudged it around there. I can maybe fix that later with some uh, this. Now I suppose you could just kind of like give it a little crimp and make that um, make that your spout. But I kind of like I kind of like that shaped spout. And I'm this is actually the whole template, but really tiny from one of Jess's classes. Kind of the shape for her little. I think it's the milk pitcher. But I didn't realize at the time. I had no idea how big that one was. So I just cut. So this makes like a little cream pitcher, this size template. But basically, we're just going to kind of mimic this shape for the spout. So hold on one moment while I go grab myself another little piece of clay. Okay. So we're going to do that little guy and I'm going to, I am going to grab a roller. I'm going to texture the, I'm going to texture the top of it just for fun. Just for fun. Let me see. Uh, we got a lot of circles, so I think we're going to use a little opposite here. Let's see. Oh, I'm just seeing. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. I just saw. I just saw your comments. Everybody that tuned in. <laughs> All right. I'm using this. Um, this is a Theraband. If anybody's ever used them, um, they're great in the studio because they're really good for like you know, stretching your wrists from doing a lot of intense work. It feels so good to do it before and after. But I, it's also nice because when I pound my slab of clay down to get ready for the roller, this doesn't like thud in. It, it gives, it flexes, but it does the job about doing it down. But it's also, I like it because it's, it's textured. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to read comments in a second there on Instagram, everybody. <laughs> on YouTube, I think I have one person that was watching and then nobody. <laughs> so I just, I just kept going. All right. So let me get this out of the way. I don't know if everybody can see what I'm doing here. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, okay. This is one of those things where like if I was cooking, I'd say, oh, I put about this much in there about a cup or whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I got to remember now how I did this before. No, I want it this way. I want it this way. Um, I think what I've done before is just kind of take a, I got a cookie cutter. So this is a three incher and I just kind of make, don't press it. Matter of fact, do it the not cut side and just kind of make a half moon, not quite a half moon. Pull that off and then just kind of do a little loop de loop. And so what I'll do here then, see if I can make it even. It's kind of a little like that. Okay. So it looks like this shape gauge it 
what you want it, how, you know, how much do you want? So I'm going to cut off, let's see, I'm going to put that over. I don't want a huge, we don't need a huge one on there. So this is, let me measure it. Let me measure. Okay, so this is uh, two and three quarters inch this way. And seven inches on the nose this way. So now what I'm going to do, let me just make sure it's symmetric. The one side is a little bit thicker. I'm just going to sh shave that off since I just freehanded it, just winged it. So that's what it looks like when it's in half. And again, we're going to score it. I guess I should have, if I'm on Instagram, I should have had it on selfie, right? Because then I could be reading, reading your comments. So now I need to decide where I'm going to put this guy. Actually, first, before I do that, sponge taco around the top. I'm actually going to take my rib, my soft rib, since I can't do it on the wheel or on the banding wheel. Um, I'm going to angle this and just press this a little bit into my hand a little bit, just to thin down that neck a little bit. Like, like when you're doing a mug, you know, you kind of make the rim nice. I'm going to do the sponge taco on there. Doodly-doo. Okay. Wipe off my rib. And okay, I scored this. So I want the seam in the back because that's where I'm going to put the handle. So I'm just going to set this on there, right? And it wants to stick because it's that one's scored and it's still really wet. Set that there, and then I'll just score the mark. And just a tiny little bit. Oop. I don't want him going in there. Oh no, I just put a big cover there. And here's this one. All right, as soon as I put this on here, I'm going to switch to Instagram. I'm gonna switch it around and see if I, see if anybody's got got questions or anything I'm just kind of you're probably like hey hey wait a minute and um so I will I will address your concerns <laughs> oh all right so we get on there all right I have to this is kind of hard I gotta do it um Really tiny little movement here. Joining this one. This side. Pulling it up. I'm pulling it up just a fraction of an inch below that seam. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the inside. Turn it around. Man, this makes me really appreciate Jessica <laughs> and all of her classes. Oh my goodness, all the work, all the preparation, especially to streamline it quickly. But again, this isn't like a, you know, 30, it's not, it's, this isn't a pressed plate. I'll just say that. No offense to anyone, but these composite pieces are a little, you know, a little tricky. I should have actually like timed this <laughs> to be honest about the, time you'll have to invest to do this. Although we'll know when we get done, right? All right, and I'm just gonna go back along the seam again with my, oh, that's good, I just stuck my fingernail through there. Even though I don't have fingernails, I always manage to do that. Um, it's my mark on my piece, I guess. There we go, kind of my finger along there. 
and I clean this up a little bit here, right there in the corners. Run it, I'm gonna run my finger along the top. Run my finger in here and clean this up here first. Actually, I'm gonna use this knife. My fingers aren't nice and smooth. All right, again, a little Take your sponge, gently clean up that edge. Don't worry about the shape because we're gonna fix that in two seconds and add that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna really make sure, I wanna make sure that this is on here. Now this is a part where it's like, it'd be really fun to add little embellishments. You could put little, I don't know, make little lemon slices and put them on here or little lemon leaves and put them around as accents on, you know, some of the joins or something like that. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight. Maybe I will on another one, but I saw this woman and I will, I will post her name um, on the comments. I'll have to look her up. I follow her on Instagram. Oh my goodness. You should see what she does with tissue transfers. It's not, I don't think she's a clay share member, but she does her tissue transfers and then she does these decorative um, textured borders along seams. And it just takes tissue transfers to a whole nother level. They are just fantastic. But since this one's kind of casual, it's just the little citrus guy. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that on here. I think I'm just going to leave them. I might put the glaze on here on the seams when he's dry enough to do that. But, um, okay, so now we're ready. I'm gonna get my hands wet. No, I, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm not gonna do that. I said I was gonna switch Instagram around so I could see questions. So I'm gonna do that really. Let's see. Um, there we go. Here I am, everyone. Okay, let's see. Hey, Kathleen. Okay, let me see. Uh, Debbie's there. Hi, Deb. Just got home from volunteering. Oh, my phone is getting hot. It's just telling me that my phone needs to cool down. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it just said, I think I just lost everybody. Let me see. Yep, I did. I did. And I finally get a chance to... Uh... Mm. I don't know if everybody can still hear me or not. I just lost my live feed on Instagram because my phone was too hot, which makes sense because it's 90 some degrees here in the studio. And it was running for a really long time. So my apologies. I don't know if anybody's still seeing me or anything. I don't think so, though. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to just stick my finger right smack in the middle of this spout. And then I'm going to, I, I just do this. And I'm just rolling my finger. And then I'm going to, it's kind of weird. You want it to, you want it to kind of go over. Right? So I'm just kind of shaping it because you want that, you want everything to come down this way. I'm trying to remember how done. I think I'm just going to take my sponge and make a pouring motion <laughs> with my hand. And I think I'm going to just keep this one simple. It doesn't have to be fancy, but I'm just going to make that in the middle. I'm going to use the butt end of my clay knife again. I lost the Instagram feed because my phone is overheating. So I'm just pulling this into my hand on the inside. And then I'm going to come back in with the 
this sponge and smooth it out, make it pretty. All right. Thank you for watching. I am going to cover this up for the night. And uh, I don't want it to dry out too fast. But um, I need to make a handle, a big strong handle. And that is going to have to set up for a little bit. In this weather, I just don't know what it's going to do. So I need to, uh, there we go. There we go. So I need to make a, I need to make a nice big strong handle for it. And I will hop back on tomorrow or later tonight. I don't know. There will be another one. There will be another video showing how to put the handle on. But in general, there's your composite. Here's our little. And so there is your Clay Share June Challenge picture. Thanks for watching, everybody.